This little folder right here is the Blaupunkt Fiene, a sleek and versatile e-bike that offers both style and substance. Its compact design and magnesium alloy frame make it perfect for travelers, RVers, anybody who needs it to do a little exploring and have to consider tight storage spaces. With a starting price of $2,000, does Blaupunkt deliver the value to deserve the price tag? Well, the answer might surprise you. So get ready for some serious portability and convenience as we unfold the Fiene and see what a company that's been in business for almost 100 years, that's 100 with an H, can create. Now, for our review, we're actually going to be showcasing the Henry as well, and just know that all the specs are virtually identical. And don't forget to visit electrifiedreviews.com for detailed specs and comparisons. The Fiene is powered by a Jonda rear hub motor, providing 250 watts of power and 50 newton meters of torque. Now this brushless and maintenance-free motor combined with a cadence and speed sensor makes for a smooth and surprisingly powerful ride. And with three levels of pedal assist, you'll feel like you've got an invisible sidekick helping you conquer those pesky hills or state park trails. Equipped with a 36-volt, 10.5 amp-hour LG lithium-ion battery, the Fiani boasts a range of up to 45 miles on a single charge. Now depending on the terrain and all that jazz, you're probably going to get closer to 20 to 25 miles, but that is usually more than enough for the use case if we're thinking about travel or RVs, things like that. It takes about four to five hours to fully charge so you can easily top it up overnight or during the workday and the removable and lockable battery means added security and flexibility when charging or storing your e-bike. Now there are some bikes out there that have a sort of similar design but none of them feature a removable battery like this. I thought that was a pretty cool touch and I like the way that's integrated into the frame here. Speaking of the frame, this is a magnesium alloy frame and it is lightweight and durable. The 20 inch wheels paired with the 2.125 inch tires offer a comfortable and stable ride. So the folding design allows for easy storage, transportation, making it an excellent choice for folks on the go or those with limited storage space. With its racing orange or black color combination, this e-bike is sure to make a statement as you cruise around the campground. They also have another one that's blue. Thought I'd throw it in there in case anybody's like, oh, I have to have a blue e-bike. They also offer that as well. The only downside to this bike is the fact that you'll probably get stopped so many times along the way that walking might have been faster. The Fiene features a Shimano six-gear derailleur with a 44-tooth chainring, providing a smooth and efficient shifting experience. Now, this is probably a little bit more gears than we're used to seeing on a bike with this footprint, but having the option to shift into a high gear expands the types of terrain you can handle on it. Now, at top speed, there was a bit of ghost pedaling, but if you're really just using this to scoot around here, or scoot around there, then being able to efficiently pedal at top speeds probably won't matter to you. Equipped with hydraulic disc brakes, and 160 millimeter motors on the front and rear, the Fiani delivers reliable stopping power at the tip of your fingers. Now, these brakes do provide excellent control, as I mentioned, responsiveness, all that good stuff, and you would be able to navigate city streets, crowded bike paths safely with braking like this. I even did a bit of skidding in the grass because, well, that's just what I do, and I definitely felt like I had good control over it the entire time. The Fiani does not come with a suspension fork or a spring seat post, which means it is best suited for smooth surfaces and well-maintained bike paths. However, the 20-inch tires with side while reflective stripes provide added visibility on your rides. Now, does that make the ride more comfortable? Not really, but isn't the feeling of safety comforting? The Blood Punk comes with a range of extras, integrated LED headlights with reflectors and a USB rechargeable rear light ensure increased visibility and safety on the road. This e-bike also features mud guards, a kickstand, foldable pedals, and a chain protector for added convenience. Now for the mud guards, both bikes actually came with a mud guard. I just wanted to show you kind of what it looked like both ways. So the Henry has the mud guards, the Fiani does not. So there you go, options. Now it doesn't come with any way to carry anything on it, but you can opt for a carry bag or a handlebar bag, something like that. So you can have a couple more storage options. And if you're going to be riding this thing around in the dirt and want to pop it into your RV or car afterwards, having your optional rolling bag is highly recommended. It fits the bike well and seemed to be pretty high quality. The other small extra that's pretty cool is this little roller blade wheel that acts as the frame rest when the bike is folded. Now usually we just see a welded stand thingy, but having this here was not only super convenient, but it also made it super easy to roll around. Pretty cool and innovative thinking if you ask me. Now in folded, its compact dimensions are about 33 inches by 20 inches by 24 inches. And this folding e-bike weighs about 46.3 pounds, including the battery, which itself weighs around 3.3 pounds. The Fiani can accommodate a maximum payload of 265 pounds, making it suitable for a wide range of riders. Now this bike is an ideal choice for RV owners and casual riders seeking a compact, stylish, and convenient e-bike. Its folding design, lightweight frame, and six-speed Shimano derailleur make it perfect for navigating city streets while the integrated lights and reflectors ensure added safety during low light conditions. So whether you're commuting to work or exploring the campgrounds, the Fiani offers a fun and efficient way to get around. Now, those specs are nice and all, but how does it feel to ride around? If only there was a way we could do something like that, like some sort of test where we could ride it around doing testing. Hmm, let, me, let me think about that. 
All right, guys, we'll come outside for the ride test on the fin. I think I'm saying that a little, maybe a little bit too uh, Italian, but I like to say it and I do the little finger thing, so uh, we'll start it off with that. And we're here to do some riding. Now, we're not gonna ride off this cliff into the water, that would be silly. We're gonna pop back over here on this bike path and we'll see what she's all about. Now, it's got three levels of pedal assist, right? So we're in three right now. Let me go to two. Now, what is interesting is that the level of pedal assist actually dictates how much throttle you get. So there's some bikes we test where you have access to the full power, the full time. Uh, this is not one of those things. You're only gonna get the throttle depending on what level of pedal assist you're in. But we want the throttle, so we'll put in pedal assist level three. We can do some, some pedaling as well. And yeah, for a 350 watt motor and a smaller bike, this actually is a very comfortable ride. So I'm about 5'10", and right now, just so I can get a good angle on the camera, it's a little bit low for me as far as like having like a good pedal geometry. But if I'm just cruising around, I can lift the seat up another probably like three inches or so. And it's still like a really nice reach for me, you know, being at 5'10", and I'll have like a really solid pedal geometry. So if you're looking at the bike and like, oh, it looks a little too small, and it probably wouldn't be uncomfortable, or it probably would be uncomfortable. Uh, depending, you know, if you if you have it, if you have it right, it, it won't be. Go ahead and do throttle only. There's a little bit of an uphill here. Like I said, at four 350 watt motor, it is uh, pretty quiet. Now those are, you know, generally more quiet, but it's quiet and it feels like it's fairly powerful as well. So I'm about 220 and uh, I can just cruise around with throttle only on this thing for, for quite a while. Top speed, no, uh, no issues. Let's go ahead and hit around this corner real quick. A little bit of an uphill here. Yeah, not a problem. Now, this isn't something you want to take on some crazy hills. Although, you know, if you have this down into uh, first gear, it will be a pretty good gear for climbing. I'm going to take it over here and test it on this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, embankment over here on the side of the road here. And uh, we'll, we'll see if we can get to climb this thing. Now, this is kind of putting, putting it to the limits in the sense that you never would try to go up something like this straight up and down. Like for example, I mean if you were gonna come up this like you can come around at the at the side and you can have a you know a good attack angle the whole time. But if you're a, an e-bike reviewer then you know you gotta review the bike, right? You gotta do things that uh, people won't normally do to see how it handles so they know what they can and can't handle. So like I said it is in Pulse level three Got it in the first gear here, so we got a nice, nice ratio. Let's go ahead and just uh, head up the side here. I mean, I'm putting a little bit of effort, but it's still a pretty ridiculous climb on this bike. Not doing that. Now we're gonna test out these hydraulic brakes. Even on the incline, they're stopping us really well. And we'll head off into the trail. I'm just kidding, I probably, uh, I probably will regret this. Again, this is a nice little, you know, this is probably something you see like in a state park, kind of cruising around. Uh, there's gonna be some, some bumps and some rocks and stuff to go around, but this bike is so nimble, you can kind of, you know, thread your way through the roots and that sort of stuff. Yeah, this isn't actually, uh, it's just that bad. Now, you know, it doesn't have any traditional suspension to it, so this is, uh, again, not exactly the, uh, the ideal place to take a bike like this, but if you found yourself here, then uh, you can do it. Looks like they're doing some work over there, so you don't need to be a nuisance. Got all these volunteers out here spending their time while I'm riding around on these e-bikes. You know, I don't need to make their, uh, their job any more difficult than it is. All right, so we're cruising around. Now the rallying here is the keys right here. So if I'm, if I hold that, there's no rattle to it, right? Like especially with the tra traffic uh, noise here, you don't hear anything. 
But I don't want to lose the keys, so they're there. In case anybody's wondering what the uh, the rattling is, I'd say rewind the video. I just explained it to you. So yeah, actually, I was pretty impressed with the way it felt uh, riding around those little trails. Like I said, that's something that you'd probably see uh, at a state park or something similar to that. So it's nice to know that you know it can handle that. Actually, this will be a really good spot over here too. Again, hydraulic brakes, doing an excellent job. So cool to see hydraulic brakes on a bike like this. It's only going 20 miles per hour, and it's not very heavy, so you'd think that they would go, oh, we don't really need to do hydraulics, but I love it. And as you guys know, I like to do, uh, you know, I like to skid around every once in a while, so having the hydraulic brakes really allows me to do that a little bit more, and uh, I'm appreciative of it. Again, kind of cruising on this, uh, you know, dirt path. There's nothing crazy here, you know, no real roots or anything, but we're just, uh, yeah, just cruising along. And again, very nimble. I feel like I could take this pretty fast and just whoop, 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 whoop. You have to make those noises when you do uh, maneuvers like that, in case you are wondering. Oh, there's a washout. A little bit of a jump. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. And if you haven't noticed, I haven't really been pedaling. I'm just kind of using the throttle. Now we're gonna hit this drop here. Uh, mandatory drop, uh, if you can't read signs. I will skip it for now. <laughs> this is actually pretty fun. I don't know if that's a, a category or a sport, just mini, mini biking on uh, mountain bike trails, but it, it's a, if it's not, it should be, because it's a lot of fun. What else is there to talk about this? I mean, we just took this on a trip that most people will never take this on, and there's no extra rattling, just the keys. As I mentioned, that's just the keys there. And it's acting like it didn't do anything. It's acting like it just woke up from an app or something. A little bit of a horn there. I guess I didn't cover that in the review. There you go. That's called uh, CYR, covering your review, you know? Pop up here on this trail. Of course, feels good. Hit this steep embankment here. Gosh, those brakes are nice. And I know, you know, it's, it's a lighter bike, and so, you know, they wouldn't have to be amazing hydraulic brakes to give us that performance, but it does feel pretty nice. Usually a question you get with uh, some of these smaller bikes is do you have ghost pedaling? And uh, to be fair, there is a little bit kind of at that 20 mile an hour mark, but if you're kicking along at this, and this isn't a terrible, this isn't a terrible clip, but this is kind of where you gotta be in order to not be ghost pedaling at 20 miles per hour. So if you wanna do something a little bit more leisurely, we probably need a couple more gears here. But uh, yeah, if you're just out for a, you know, out for a cruise and you wanna cruise in between that 15 and 20 miles per hour mark, there's really no ghost pedal until you hit 20. And like I said, it's, you just gotta pick up the pace a little bit and it's not unreasonable. You know, some bikes you gotta be like, wow, 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 wow. But this one, that's not an unreasonable uh, pace to be going right there. Yeah, guys, that, uh, that is the, uh, that is the Fiene. The Fiene. And again, I don't know if it's Italian. I just like saying it that way. So, And with that in mind, guys, make sure you head over to electrifiedreviews.com. Check out all the cool stuff we have over there, the compare tool, the advanced search. You can browse by brands. You can browse by categories. You know, check out our bike reviews. Look at our pretty pictures. If you guys have any suggestions on how we can improve, please let us know in the comments down below or the comments under the reviews. And we'll catch you on the next one. All right, folks, that is going to do it for our review of the Henry and the Fiene from La Punct. Its compact design makes it perfect for travelers or RVers who need to do a little extra exploring and have to consider the tight storage spaces. It would appear that the value here does indeed make me think that $2,000 is a fair price to pay, and honestly, I don't know if I was expecting that answer either. But it's well-designed, well-executed, and comes from a brand that is new to the e-bike space but has been involved in the transportation industry for almost 100 years. Not a shabby resume. Thanks for sticking with us, and we'll catch you on the next one.